Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. For today's review, we're going to take a look at the Mesco 112 Collective Punisher. And this is the regular release, which I got a while ago, but I haven't had a chance to review him. So here he is. Let's start off with the packaging. So you can see there's a slip cover that protects the actual, uh, actual packaging. So I'll just slip this off first. And here you can see a nice Punisher logo in the front. Very simple, very elegant. And on the back, you've got Punisher, different optional uh, faces, his weapons, and yeah, looks really, really nice. And this is actually another slip cover that goes over the top of the actual packaging. And on the inside again, you've got the Punisher logo here, and this is actually a um, flip open lid, which you can see the figure inside. And I've already taken him out, so He's empty of course but you can see all of the accessories that he comes with which is really cool and on the inside cover there's a really nice artwork of Punisher there and here is the inside of the packaging and as you can see the figure would have been held in really nicely there's also plastic sheets that protect the figure during transportation and storage and on the back here you've got the secondary tray and this tray has the Ziploc bag and also the display base arm which is pretty standard for Mesco 112 collective figures. And here are the, all the accessories that comes with the Punisher figure. Um, I'm just going to run through these um, quickly and then I'll do close-ups of each. So he gets two optional heads. One is a bruised head. One is a standard shouting head, which is really nicely painted. He gets um, three pairs of optional hands. He gets these open grasping hands or choking hands. He gets a pair of the um, weapon or trigger hands. Very nicely done. And he also gets um, one left hand. It's sort of like open relaxed hand. But the other side, I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's more like a, uh, it's like a closed fist, but it's, it's a little bit more, um, I don't know, it looks like it could be a supporting hand when he's jumping over obstacles or for punching people in the throat, I'm not sure. And then he also gets his um, grenade launcher, very nicely detailed. And the grenade launcher comes with six grenade shells, which you can actually put inside the launcher. He gets a sniper rifle, which comes with an extra clip, a submachine gun, which comes with an extra clip as well, a handgun with an extra clip, and a hunting knife, and lastly, the muzzle effect, which fits on both, uh, actually all three of these guns, I think. But um, yeah, I'll do a close up of that to confirm. And here is his standard face that comes out of the packaging on the body. This is a, more like a, just a relaxed looking face of Frank, very nicely detailed, nicely sculpted and painted and just put the other two heads side by side so you can have a look at the differences and I'll just pop on the other heads and the angry shouting face very very nice and with his hands um, you do have to be careful because I have heard people breaking the wrist pegs so they should come out pretty easily, but just be careful of those pegs. And let's put a trigger finger hand on there. And it pops on and off pretty easily. And then you can just put any weapon of your choosing into the trigger hand. And he holds all of his weapons really, really well. And here is a closer look at the grenade launcher. Very nicely detailed, very nicely painted. And there are a few moving parts on this, so the stock can move up and down. And you can also swing the back of the gun out, so you can actually fit the shells inside. And I'll just put a couple in there to show you. And this thing rotates as well, so you can do that. Put some shells in, rotate it, so that's really cool. And with this sniper rifle, again, very nicely detailed. I'm not sure if this is based on a real life model. I'm not a gun expert, but it does look very realistic. 
And the cool thing is you can actually take the clip out and you can see on the top, there's a little bullet molded in there and it's even painted. And then you can obviously change the clip because he's got two of them. So that's really cool. And the muzzle effect does fit onto the sniper rifle. So that looks really cool. And next we've got his little submachine gun. And I think this is based on a real life model, but I can't remember what it is, but it's very nicely detailed. Again, the clip pulls out. You can see the little bullet molded and painted on there. So that's really cool. And he comes with two of these clips so you can change them. So that's really nice. And again, the muzzle effect will fit onto the submachine gun. And lastly, let's have a look at his pistol. Now this looks like a Colt pistol. I'm not sure of the exact model name, but I remember playing with these growing up. Or well, BB guns, of course, but not the real thing, but looks very similar to a BB gun I used to have. And again, the magazine can pull out. You can see the bullet sculpted and painted in there. And you also get a spare one of those. So you get two clips. And the cool thing about this handgun is that um, you can actually cock it. So this top bit slides back. You can see the nice barrel inside there. So it's very, very nicely done. And the very, very last thing is his little um, hunting knife. Very nicely sculpted, very sharp details. You can even see the texture on the handle, which is really nice. And this thing actually stores on the back of Punisher. So he's got a little pouch here where he can put his hunting knife. And speaking of storage for weapons, unfortunately he doesn't have any storage for any of his other weapons apart from the knife, which is a real shame because he comes packed with weapons. Um, what I've seen other people do, and this has worked quite effectively, is um, you can get a gun holster from the Marvel Legends Scourge figure see I've already taken the holster off it just simply slides off and you can use that on Punisher the paint isn't exactly a match but if you wanted to you can paint the um, the holster to match but just slip it on his leg and it will fit there very nicely and his handgun will fit very nicely in that holster and now for a closer look at the figure itself so like I've mentioned before the head sculpt is absolutely beautiful you can actually see his eyes it looks like he's got a soul in there because it's so lifelike it's amazing um, I have noticed that the skin tone doesn't quite match between the neck and his head which is a bit of a shame he's got a really pink neck but if you look at it from the front on, it's not so bad. And then moving on to his um, chest area, you've got this nice armor plating that wraps around. Very nice buckle detail there. And on the back, it's very nicely textured. It looks like some sort of Kevlar. So that's really cool. And he's got his knife pouch there and a number of other pouches on the side that has been molded and painted beautifully. It's super realistic. And then moving down to his legs, the uh, fabric on the pants is slightly different to that on the top. The top is more like a jersey material. It's very springy. You can actually roll the sleeves up, so that's kind of cool. You can see the skin tone on his arm is the same as the neck, so it doesn't quite match his face. But if you've got the sleeve down, you won't even notice that. And on the back, you've even got like an elbow patch. So very nice um, attention to detail there by Mesco. And his um, belt is actually a separate piece to the armor. And I'm sure you can take this off somehow. I think it's just clipped in. Um, same as the armor up the top, you can actually undo it. There's two little tabs there you can undo, but I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna be a pain to put it back on. So anyway, coming back down to the pants, the pant material is a little bit springy, but it's more of a canvas material than the jersey material up top here. And having a look at his boots, very nicely sculpted. 
very nicely painted. You've got two different tones of black. You've got the glossy finish up top here and more of a satin finish. And on the boots here, you've got a bit of paint to replicate mud or dirt to give it that extra level of realism. So that's really, really cool. And the bottom of the feet have been detailed as well. And for articulation, he can look up that far and down that far. So not too bad. And you can actually move the head back and forth on that neck joint. And he can also do side to side tilting and all the way around. With his shoulders, there is a bit of a butterfly joint so he can move his arms forward and back. And he can lift his arms up that high and down to there. Um, you can rotate it all the way, but again, the fabric, clo uh, the fabric um, costume is going to hinder how much you can rotate. So you don't want to rotate it too much because it's going to stretch the fabric. And he does have bicep swivel from side uh, all the way around. And this is not so bad because you can actually just move the fabric back as you rotate the arm. And double jointed elbows, very nice bend there. And for the wrist, he has a pin and swivel joint, so he can rotate all the way around, and then he can do in and out. And then coming down to his body, I think he does have a um, torso joint, but because the armor is kind of stiff, you can't really get a lot out of that joint. Or maybe he doesn't. But either way, there's not much you can do with the top half of the body. Yeah, not much there. And in terms of crunch, crunch forward that far. And back, oof, not that far either. So his, his actual torso area is quite stiff. But uh, you can get a little bit of side to side from the waist joint there. And he's got a bit of rotation. But again, all of his armor and his pouches kind of hinder that joint. So you're not going to get a lot of dynamic twisting poses out of that joint there. And coming down to his hips, he can do pretty much a perfect split. And the fabric is not stretched too badly, so that's pretty good. He can kick forward that far and back that far. Oh, and just coming back to the waist joint, just be careful when you're crunching the um, the body that you don't bend the knife because it is kind of sitting high up here and back to the legs so he's got thigh rotation up top here double jointed knees gives him a really good bend and he can turn at the top of the boots or rotate sorry and for his feet he can point down that far up about there he's got rotation at the ankles and very 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 tiny amount of ankle pivot it's almost non-existent let's try this side okay this side's slightly better you can see you can get a little bit of angle there but this side is a little bit tougher and in terms of height, he comes in at about 16 and a half centimeters to the top of his head, which is about 6.49 inches. And now for some size comparisons. First up, here he is with Mesco one Tough Collective Daredevil. And here he is with Marvel Legends Punisher. Here he is with SS Figure Arts Son Goku. DC Icons Superman. And lastly, Marvel Legends Cyclops. And before I move on to my final thoughts, um, I'm just going to share this with you guys. I'm sure those of you that own this figure already know this but you can actually do a head swap between the Marvel Legends Punisher and the Mesco version so the Mesco head will fit very nicely onto the Marvel Legends figure and it instantly lifts the figure and makes him look really really realistic but you can't really put the Marvel Legends Punisher head on the Mesco body because um, the gap here is a little bit tight because the neck is quite wide on the Mesco version so it's not going to really peg in there all right so what are my thoughts on this guy I think he's absolutely brilliant he comes with so much accessories 
and um, all of the paint application and the sculpting detail on this guy is super realistic. I really, really love this guy. Um, I'm just going to do some part swaps so you can see how fun this guy can be. Um, he's got a lot of good things going for him. I really love all of the um, accessories that he comes with. Although I don't really think he needs the extra um, clips for each of the guns. Because really, he doesn't have anywhere to store them. So they're just going to end up in the, um, the Ziploc bag or in the packaging. So I'm not sure why there were so many things included. Um, the one thing that I really wish that he had was some sort of way to store all, all of his weapons when they're not in use, especially the handgun. As it stands, you can only pretty much have him holding his guns because he doesn't have anywhere to put them. Um, one other weak point to this figure is the slightly, well actually, the quite um, restricted ankle pivot. I wish he had a bit more ankle pivot action here. And that pretty much sums up my review of the Mesco One Tough Collective Punisher. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time for another tour review.